Do you need a commercial license to fly your drone? For most of you that aren't in business for yourself, the answer to that question is going to be no. You can fly recreationally as long as you're not flying over large crowds or you know, in places where it would be dangerous to other people. If you're just recreational flying out over the ocean, around a river, you know, just cruising around doing some nature scenery, things like that, you're fine. But if you're going to use that footage for the purposes of marketing or selling, then you need the commercial drone license. According to the FAA, you need the Part 107 aeronautical knowledge test to be completed satisfactorily to receive your license, and then you can legally fly for business purposes. That would include wedding photographers, real estate photographers that are using their drones, and in my case, commercial window film and building wraps. We love to do these dramatic fly arounds. You can see an example here. Here's another one. It's one of my favorites here. These are all examples of footage that I've used from my Inspire One drone to market the projects that we're doing, just to let other people know, hey, check out these buildings we've done. You know, we really specialize in large commercial window film projects, you know, in Southern California. Now, those videos were done before I even really understood the law myself. So I really had no choice. If I want to continue to do footage like that, I've got to get my license. I signed up for a online drone uh, school and I'm going to do a screen share to, to show you that. It's uh, very comprehensive. There's a lot of knowledge you need to know, a lot of manned aircraft type knowledge, including airport flight patterns, weather. You need to understand uh, all of the things that could jeopardize your flight safety issues, uh, a lot of the radio oriented uh, speak that you have to have memorized, you need to commit that to memory. And of course, very importantly, your aeronautical charts, your supplemental charts, and um, a lot of the things that manned aircraft pilots have to know. This is all very interesting. And for me personally, if I'm gonna do something, I don't want to be worried about someone walking up to me and questioning what I'm doing. For me, having the knowledge that what I'm doing is legal and very precisely where I am, what time I'm flying, what type of flight I'm doing, uh, what type of airspace I'm flying in. You know, I wanna know more than anyone else that would come up to me. So you can say, no, nah, you know, actually what I'm doing is completely legal. And there's a lot of power to that. There's a lot of satisfaction. And it also bring your nerves way down because flying sometimes can be a little nerve wracking already because you've got, in my case, you know, the Inspire One is about a $3,000 machine and you know, you don't wanna crash that. By the way, I would like to give a plug to DJI and I don't get paid by them at all, but I did accidentally fly my drone into the LA River. I was doing some cool footage and I hit a, a concrete pile on it, flipped upside down and went in some really nasty water. I recovered the drone and I took it back and I sent it to him and I said, look, I understand this isn't covered by water, but you know, actually no drone company will cover it if you fly it into the water, right? You're gonna ruin it. It's a highly sensitive electronic device, unless it's a waterproof drone. I didn't hear from them for a while and I thought, oh man, they're blowing me off or, you know, I just want them to fix it, whatever it costs, you know? They sent me a brand new Inspire One drone, brand new, new camera, new everything. Big ups to DJI, I can't thank you guys enough. I've, I've told that story to, I'm not kidding, probably 150 or 200 people and now, anyone that watches this, I'm telling, that's good customer service. It's a great lesson in business. So I'm about to take my aeronautical knowledge test. I've got an appointment here in about 30 days. I'm gonna go back through all the lessons in the drone school that I signed up for and make sure that I'm absolutely on point. I wanna pass this thing first time and uh, as soon as I do, I'll do a little uh, vlog about that, show you the license, what it looks like, and I'll talk a little bit about what, what my experience on the test was. For now, let's go check out some websites, uh, do a screen share, and uh, go over some of the things that I've learned and give you a little bit of an idea of some of the things that you'll be studying if you decide you want to get your commercial drone license. Like our video? Hit subscribe and give us a thumbs up! These are all my bookmark sites. These are places I like to log on really quickly to get information before I fly, such as weather, flight restrictions, and of course this page here, which is the Sky Vector page where you go to get up to the minute aeronautical charts. This is for a flight I did down in San Pedro, California near the Queen Mary and the Vincent Thomas Bridge. So I wanted to log in and just find out 
what airspace I would be in and anything that I need to be aware of for a safe flight. And from there, I always like to go to the Aviation Weather Center and just check the weather, make sure that uh, you've got your METAR report and your SIGMET, and of course, check the temporary flight restrictions just to make sure that there's nothing in your area that would prevent you from flying where you wanna fly that day. I'll log on over where I signed up for my drone pilot school. This is called Drone Pilot Ground School, and I think it's an excellent course. Everything is in both video and written transcript. So depending on how you prefer to learn, you can do one or the other or both. And I think they did a great job. Now I won't log on out of professional courtesy. You've just got to sign up to see the course, but I can assure you it's a really good one. Lots of practice tests and things. So you should be able to pass with that. Moving on to the UTC, this is Coordinated Universal Time or Zulu Time as it's commonly referred to in aviation. This is just a single clock that everyone uses so that uh, we're not confusing local time zones, which, you know, everyone's talking to each other from different time zones, so we don't want any accidents. Use Zulu Time. In aviation, we use Celsius rather than Fahrenheit. Of course, being born in America, in my head, everything is Fahrenheit, so I had to learn how to translate that somehow. So everything between 20 degrees Celsius and 30 degrees is t-shirt weather. Everything cooler than 20 degrees starts to get, you know, a little bit chilly. Anything hotter than 30 degrees may be getting a little bit hot. So you can just factor that into your flight information, of course, how you dress. Okay, moving on to PSI exams online. This is where you go to sign up for your part 107 exam. You just go to this website and link up with them. They'll charge you 150 bucks and get you in touch with the exam center and scheduled. Next is this part of the FAA site where you would go to get a waiver. If you're gonna be operating in certain conditions that are normally not allowed, you're gonna need a waiver for that. Examples are you know, flying at night, flying directly over a person or a bunch of people, maybe multiple aircraft, flying beyond the pilot's visual line of sight, over 400 feet, things like that. So make sure you, you get a hold of them way ahead of schedule because it can take up to 90 days to process these waivers. Okay, everybody, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe and please like this video so that we can continue to make them for you. <laughs> <Are> you <kidding? laughs>